الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا اما بعد فان استق الحديث كتاب الله وان خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اول بريز في الله سبحانه وتعالى and peace and blessings be upon his prophets and messengers all the prophets and messengers of allah from adam alayhi salam to nuh alayhi salam to ibrahim alayhi salam to musa alayhi salam and to isa alayhi salam and to last and the final prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam wa alayhi wa alayhi majma'in i bear witness that there is no god except allah and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam wa alayhi is his last and final prophet and messenger Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Ibrahim Wa laqad arsalna Musa bi ayatina an akhrij qaumaka min az-zulumat ila an-nur wa dhakkirhum bi ayyamillah inna fi dhalika laayatin li kulli sabbarin shakur wa id qala Musa li qaumihi zkuru ni'matallahi alaykum id anjaakum min ali fir'auna yasumunakum su'a al-'adhab وَيُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِّن رَّبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَئِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَذِيبَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ We sent Moses with our signs bring out your people from the depth of darkness into light remind them of the days of Allah there are truly signs for every steadfast thankful person and so moses said to his people remember allah's blessings on you when he saved you from pharaoh from pharaoh's people who were inflicting terrible suffering on you slaughtering your sons and sparing only your women that was a severe test from your lord remember that he promised If you are thankful I'll give you more but if you are thankless my punishment is terrible indeed the time is the creation of Allah and all time belongs to Allah just like all space belongs to Allah all time belongs to Allah but in the time there are certain things that happen in the human history that are full of meaning and lessons and there are events that happen where subhan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his special blessings to some people and also events happen where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his special anger towards some people so these are the days of favor or the days of retribution and punishment and the quran uses the term for that ayyamullah the days of allah every day belong to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no doubt about that but there are certain days that have a special significance and allah says in the quran wa zakkirhum bi ayyamillah remind the people about the days of allah and those days those who followed the rules of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who obeyed the prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were successful people and also those days where people dis- disobeyed turned away from the right path then allah's punishment came upon them so those are also the days to remember so that means that human history is full of lessons but who turns from those lessons who take lessons إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ 
In this, there are signs for those who are patient, who are steadfast, and who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people are grateful to Allah, and if people are steadfast, they can learn from history. Otherwise, people see the events happen, and they pass by, and they don't take any lessons from them. So one of those days that are mentioned, and Musa alayhi salam reminded his people about those days, is that when the children of Israel, from the family of Musa alayhi salam, followers of Musa alayhi salam, they were in Egypt. And they were going through a lot of difficulties. They were suffering, they were oppressed, they were persecuted. The pharaohs, some pharaohs, they even started slaughtering their male ch children. If they find out that there was a male child born in the family, they would kill that child. Only female child should be, could, could be spared. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, There was a big, big test for you. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa alayhi salam, and Musa alayhi salam came to liberate them. And those who followed Musa alayhi salam, they were out. And the day came when they were taken out from there. Pharaoh and his armies, they followed. When they heard that Musa alayhi salam is taking the people out from Egypt, Pharaoh and his family, they followed that. Pharaoh and his followers, his, his army, they followed that. And as you know the story, they came to a point when there was, the ocean was in front of them, and they were uh, the enemy behind them, and they came and they said, Inna la mudrakun. Musa alayhi salam, what happened? This is, we are going to be caught here between the sea and the enemy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa alayhi salam, use your stick, the asa that was given to Musa alayhi salam, use that stick, a strike on the water. And he struck it on the water and the water made the way for the people. And they saw the dry land appeared. And the water was standing like two walls of water on both sides. And they passed by that. And they crossed the river. Pharaoh and his army, they thought that this is the dry way. This is the dry land. They came. And they were drowned. Because the water came back. And they were drowned. So this story is a very powerful story mentioned in the Quran. Several times. Many, many lessons are one can learn from that. This is a story, not of a story of just of a particular race and group. This is an important story. It's a prophetic story. A story of belonging to Musa alayhi salam, great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's mentioned in the Quran. There is no other prophet who's mentioned as many times as Musa alayhi salam. His name is mentioned more than 130 times in the Quran. And his many ways, the many aspects of Musa alayhi salam's life is mentioned. So, uh, it is reported in Al-Bukhari, Sahih Al-Bukhari, that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi came to Medina from Makkah, met the Hijra, he came and he found the people of, the Jewish people of Medina, they were fasting on the 10th day of Muharram. And he asked them, well, why you are fasting? And they say, this is a great day. This is the day that Allah saved Musa alayhi salam and the people who were with Musa alayhi salam on this day. So we fast on this day, thanking Allah. And Rasulullah salam said, Nahnu ahakku bi Musa minkum. We are entitled to Musa more than you are. Musa belongs to us more than he belongs to you. Because we are the true followers of the prophets of Allah. We are in the same line. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, all these great prophets of Allah. We are entitled to Musa than you. So Rasulullah sallam, he fasted on that day and he told the Sahaba to fast. And also fast on this day. So fasting on this day became an obligatory fast, fourth fast. Amarahum bi siyami. He told them, 
you should fast on this day. So it became an obligatory fast. And it remained an obligatory fast until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet the fasting of the month of Ramadan. And when the fasting of the month of Ramadan became obligatory, then the fasting of Ashura became nafal fasting. It's not an obligatory fasting today, but it became a nafal fasting. And Rasulullah used to fast. And before the end of his life, he said, if I live another year, I will fast even the ninth day also. So ninth day and the tenth day both. So that is the two days of fasting. Because he did not want the people will become follow exactly the same way as Jewish people were doing. He said, that, let us do it a little more. We do fast two days, not just one day. So fasting of Ashura is the ninth day and the tenth day. And inshallah, this is going to be next Wednesday and Thursday. Because today is the 4th of Muharram. So Thursday, next Wednesday and Thursday, 15th, uh, 15th and 16th of, uh, of, of, uh, of December, inshallah. These are the days that are recommended fasting for this. There is a very important lesson in this story. And the story is not just told for the story's sake. There is a very important lesson in this story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can defeat the mightiest power. And that time, actually at that time, the Pharaoh and his army, they were the mightiest people. They were the most powerful people. They had an empire. They were ruling the whole of Middle East. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can defeat the mightiest empire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give, give victory to the weakest people. If they are with Allah and with the messenger of Allah. That's why this is the day to remember. It's a very, very powerful day. It's a very important day. It's a day of liberation. Day of victory. Who is on the side of Allah and who is not on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran has reminded that to the people again. Remember this story. Remember this, this history. Don't just say that this is the history of Ben Israel. This is not our history. We don't have to learn from that. No, you have to learn from all. All history because it's a prophetic history. Muslims are the real inheritors of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned many prophets one after another and they said, this is your ummah. Because we are the ummah of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the last prophet. And in his message, subsumed the prophetic messages of all. Culmination of the message of the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a very, very important day. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu fasted on this day. And he also asked the sahaba to fast on this day. That's one aspect of this day, Ashura, the 10th of Muharram. But that is another thing that also happened that we have to remember. And that is what happened after the Prophet ﷺ. He left this world and there were Khulafa Rashidun, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, Usman radiallahu an, and Ali radiallahu an. And then after that, the power went into the hand of Bani Umayyah. And Bani Umayyah became the Khulafa.